Hi there everyone and welcome back to my channel, this time for a look at acid-base pairs. So our starting acid-base theory teaches us that a Bronsted-Lowry acid is a proton donor and a Bronsted-Lowry base is a proton acceptor. To demonstrate this behavior, we can actually write an acid-base equilibrium for any acid, showcasing its interaction with a base. It's also really common to see water in these equations. Remember as well that water is amphoteric, so it could be the acid or the base. You may be looking at this and thinking, I thought we only used the equilibrium arrows for weak acids, as they are known to only partially dissociate in solution. But we can actually write this equation for strong acids too, to showcase their proton donor nature, and very often, in this case, as I mentioned before, we can use water as a base. This is because the equilibrium actually does just about exist, even with very strong acids like HCl. Once we have the equilibrium written, we can actually take the opportunity to consider it in the reverse direction. Here, we can see the same concept taking place as we saw in the forwards direction. One species donating a proton and another accepting it, taking us back to the original reactants. As a result, we can pair things up from one side of the equation to the other. Take the HCl for example here. From left to right, the HCl is donating a proton and it forms a Cl-, which we refer to here as the conjugate base. Then from right to left, the Cl- is accepting a proton to form the HCl. This makes the HCl and the Cl- an acid-base pair. Similarly, the H2O and the H3O plus are another acid-base pair. The H3O plus, in the reverse direction, donates its proton to the Cl- to form the H2O and the HCl respectively. To put some rules around this pairing, we need to make sure we don't pair the wrong acid with the wrong base. The pairs must be a one from each side format, and they must interconvert between each other in accordance with the definition with the loss or gain of a proton. I like to think of the species in the pair as like twins, but one of them is wearing a hat and the hat is representing the proton, the H plus ion, that we're transferring. Once we identify the pairs, we call one pair, pair one, and the other, pair two. The numbers actually don't matter. Just remember, acid one and base one are a pair, and acid two and base two are a pair. Which one you decide is pair one and which one you decide is pair two is not important. The assignment of numbers is not done with any preference. The focus is that you've got the right species in the pair, one taken from each side of the equation. And make sure you can keep a track of that proton. Let's have a look at some examples. In all of these, I'm going to use the blue colour to identify one acid-base pair, and I'll use the green colour to identify another acid-base pair. Now, in all of these examples, I am given the overall equation. This equilibrium has already been set up for me. Sometimes in some exam questions, you're asked to predict the products, and I'll talk about that shortly. Here in this example, you can see we have sulfuric acid, H2SO4, and nitric acid, HNO3. So that's two acids. Now, when you're presented with a scenario like this, the stronger of the two acids will donate a proton to the other. So the weaker of the two acids becomes a base for the purposes of this scenario. This is a common exam tactic with organic acids, where the Ka or pKa values are given to indicate the strength of the weak acid. For a video which explains this, please click the links on screen at the end of this tutorial. In this scenario, by studying the movement of the protons in the equation, we can identify that the H2SO4 was deemed the stronger of these two acids, and as a result, the nitric acid, as you can see here in the green, has been labeled a base.
That's it for this tutorial. For more content on physical chemistry and inorganic chemistry for your A-level, please make sure to click the links on screen now. And before you go, if you found the video helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could leave me a like and consider subscribing to stay updated. Until next time, happy revising.